What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Stephanie, and welcome to another episode of The Good, The Bad, and The Trendy, the show where we try out new, strange, and innovative products. Today, we are testing out the Dior Air Flash Spray Foundation. Now, I know this is not a brand new product. In fact, I think this product came out like three, four years ago. At the time, I hadn't even gone into foundations yet, but I loved watching videos about this foundation. It really was like this OG YouTuber favorite. It was so innovative at the time, or it was so strange at the time because it's like an aerosol can of foundation. So yeah, I finally got my grubby little hands on it <laughs> and I really wanted to share it with you on camera for the first time. I'm sure a lot of y'all are so curious about this foundation as well. So before we get into it, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe below, come join the sisterhood. No matter your true pronoun or gender identity, come join the family. All right, let's get started. I feel like all my newbie YouTuber dreams are coming true right now. <laughs> like I said, I watched a lot of people try this foundation out. At the time, I believe, yeah, I was definitely living in San Francisco at the time. I had a student's budget, so this thing is kind of pricey, but people like loved it. They went crazy for it. And now I do wear full coverage foundations uh, for events because when it comes to flash photography, you can look really nice in person and have very minimal makeup on, um, but in the photos, you kind of turn out looking like you're all splotchy, you don't look so good. So I definitely go for full coverage when I know there are gonna be some photos taken. I just was in my best friend's wedding and I did a pretty full coverage for myself then. So this could be another one of those products that I could use to really obtain that full coverage face. So I have seen many methods of application, but I'm just gonna go ahead and Try to spray this on my face first. I'm not gonna do that whole spray all over because I already know I'm not gonna like that. I feel like that's gonna waste product. And also I have dark hair, so it, it's just gonna get in my hair and I've seen too much about it. So we're gonna do the method of just spraying directly on the face and then you know, blending it out with this brush. I have a flat top kabuki brush from Sigma. At the time, this is also such a crazy YouTuber favorite. I feel like these two things came out around the same time. Like everybody was talking about a flat top kabuki from Sigma. It was really the time before beauty blenders were like super popular as well. Man, this is just like a throwback video. Okay, so the foundation that I have is in the shade 201. I hope this is my shade. I saw a few options and I think this is it. It's the best, I think, that matches my neck, so. All right, let's just go for it. You ready? Oh, okay. Mm. Oh my gosh, it is a little, it's aggressive. So we have a little patch right there. It's kind of light. Maybe, I don't know if this foundation oxidizes at all. Wow. That, that is full coverage though. It is a bit light, but you know what? I use bronzer and stuff, so it's okay. Let's try to do it right on the cheek here. Oh man, okay. Does not have an unpleasant smell at all. It actually smells quite nice. Oh my God, this is really, okay. This is much lighter than I thought it was gonna be. I personally am not really used to using a brush on my face anymore for foundation. I'm really used to only using the Beauty Blender but it's nice. It feels classic. <laughs> I put the ISO down just like one level so you can see it better. Yeah, wow. Okay, one comment is that you definitely have to work fast because I feel like I sprayed it and I talked for a second. Like you gotta spray and just blend away. But it does look nice. I feel like it looks like my skin. So there we have just the cheek. I haven't done up here or anything yet but just the cheek over here compared to this side. There's a lot of coverage there. Might be the fullest coverage thing I've worn in a long time, to be honest. So let's now spray it onto the brush. Oh, I feel like it, maybe I should have sprayed it from further away, but okay. And yeah, I feel like it really went into the brush there. Definitely have fuller coverage on this side for sure than this side. But I do think I prefer this side because this one's a little bit, it's a little intense over here for me personally. I like my skin to show through just like a bit. And they're saying if you want to do the method of just like spraying all over your face, then that'll give you lighter coverage. But, okay, let me just try spraying this. Oh my gosh. Oh. 
I just want to match it up, you know? Oh, geez. That is a lot. Okay. So clearly a little bit of this product goes a very long way. A little forehead action. I'm just going to protect my hair. Whoa. Okay. I sprayed, <laughs> I sprayed it way too high. Damn it. Okay. Oh God. Okay. I totally messed this up up here. Oh my God. I just need to blend it. <laughs> It's like in my hairline, like as I said before, like, oh, I'm not gonna spray it up there because I don't wanna get it in my hair and then I directly put it in my hair. You just have to aim a little bit better than I just did. I really have covered the whole face here. Um, definitely lighter than my body right now. I think a couple months ago, this would have been my color for sure. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually put on some concealer. So we'll see how this layers on top. I'm just gonna put a little bit of concealer right here. That's it. Obviously, I, I don't, you know, I have a little couple things on my cheek, but like, I don't feel like I have to conceal that at all. We're just gonna do this and see how it like blends together. Cause sometimes, you know, foundations and concealers don't really go well together. I'm just using my favorite Too Faced Born This Way. Talked about this one a bunch. I actually did a whole video, I think, on it for Good Bad Trendy. And I'm using a damp beauty blender for this step. I feel like if you just start using something like this, it's a really fast process, so blending it was quite easy, but you have to just go super, super fast or else it'll settle or it might just like stick in one spot, you know? Okay, now we're gonna bake a little bit. See how this powder sits. And I know in a previous uh, video, maybe it was my Becca one, some people were asking what baking is because in that video I was using the Becca powder that was like made with water as well. And baking, if you didn't know, it's just where you put a translucent powder in the areas that might move around eventually, especially if you're oily, it's good to do some of this baking. So it just really makes your makeup last all day long and it prevents like oils from really seeping through. It just settles everything in really well and adds to the life of your makeup. I, I definitely, you know, I put it all under here. It also helps set all the concealer and stuff, all your hard work. And I put it where I'm most oily as well. So T-zone down here. I mean, I'll, clearly I'm putting it pretty much all over my face, but I just love this step because I am an oily person and I like my makeup to last all day, you know? I'm just gonna go ahead and like do my brows and then I'll be right back. I feel like my brows more intense than usual. I don't know what's going on. Sometimes it just happens, but okay. I'm gonna wipe off the bake now because you don't want to keep the translucent powder on for super, super long or else it might just like settle a little bit too much in the skin. It's a sweet spot of like four to five minutes. That's what it's like for me. So here we go. It's looking pretty nice right now. This kind of looks like my skin and it's quite lightweight, you know? Like I don't feel like there's a really thick layer because there's not, I mean, the amount of product that came out for how much coverage I'm getting here, uh, it's like a very, very thin layer. And y'all know I like very thin layers of things. So uh, my final step really with my skin that I typically do is I'll use something like this, which is my Bobbi Brown um, Skin Weightless Powder Foundation. And this also will maybe add a little bit of like my actual neck color to my face. Yeah. It's like a little bit darker than this. This was definitely my body color before I went to Bermuda and got super burnt. <laughs> like extremely burnt where I have the weirdest tan lines right now, but my body got pretty tan after like two weeks, you know? after the peeling all ended. There we go. I feel like that's much better now already. You can see that, hopefully you can see. That's a little bit more of my actual color. I feel like everything is sitting nicely on top of the foundation. Like, I don't even think I even went through the specs of the foundation. I was excited about talking about how this is like an OG product that I've never been able to try. This is supposed to be 
It's a water resistant 12 hour wear. It is supposed to be a natural finish, which I very much agree with. I feel like it's a natural finish. If not on the matter side, I know some people say it's like a luminous finish, but maybe it's a different one than this one. Um, I felt like it's pretty mattifying and I enjoy that because I am oily, but apparently it's supposed to be really great for dry skin as well. That's why everybody was just going crazy for it because it's supposed to do it all. So here we go. Now I have my powder on there. Damn, this looks good and it feels good so far. I am very excited about the prospects of using this product further. So I'm just gonna go ahead now and put on like all of my other face stuff and then I'll be right back. Oh my gosh, do you see this? I added some bronzer, blush highlight, a little mascara, that's it. You know, it's been uh, 15, 20 minutes since I applied and I just think it's like settled down into the skin a little bit better. It just looks like, it looks like my skin, but it's like airbrushed. I keep looking at it from like different angles. I kind of, I get the hype now. This is the kind of product that I just, I don't know. It's the one that I've always wanted to try and now I get it. I think, you know, I have to give it some time. So I'm gonna let myself wear this throughout the day. But yeah, so far I'm clearly really feeling myself <laughs> in this foundation. So let me just wear it for the next few hours and I will check back in with you. Future Stephanie, future iPhone Stephanie right now, coming at ya. Look at this. I think it's been seven hours since I applied this. I feel like it looks great. Um, it is hot here in Los Angeles. I went out for a little bit. And you know, I am a little bit shiny. I could use a blotting sheet. But to be honest, I it looks good. I think it looks real, real good. I think this is definitely a product you have to go in person to try out. Maybe apply it on the neck, you know, at Sephora. Walk around a little bit and see what happens. But you know, I am quite satisfied with how nice my skin looks right now. You know, she's a little glossy, but I am in front of just one lamp. It's quite late at this point. And if I just did a little bit of a blot, I feel like it would look a-okay. So I think y'all already know how I feel about this foundation. I'm definitely gonna be trying it out again. I think that the Dior foundation is good. <laughs> All right, y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode of The Good, The Bad, and The Trendy. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe below. Come join the sisterhood. I love y'all, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.